Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Helen. How are you guys doing? I feel like it's been a little while since I filmed. My last video was about Pura Dora Shampoo, which is a really well-known natural hair loss sort of prevention type shampoo. I did a whole review on it. That's the last time I made a video. If you haven't watched that yet, go ahead and put that on your list for something maybe you want to catch up on after you watch this one. I'll be sure to include a link for you guys, but yeah. I am still in my bedroom, as you can see. I've shifted the angle just ever so slightly. I'm home alone today, that's why the door is open there. And I'm just trying to catch the meager natural light available to me here in Toronto, Canada in late October. So here we are. Today I thought I'd make a video about some of the basics about hair care, because I don't think I've ever compiled them in one video. I feel like they've been sort of scattered all over the place over the last four years. Like, So those of you who've been here for a long time, you may have seen them and caught sort of what I do in terms of my hair routine. And for those of you who are new, and there are lots of new subscribers, thank you very much for subscribing. You may not have heard these before, so I thought let's just put them all together, have a little bit of a, a sort of get ready with me hair version. Uh, tonight I'm going out to celebrate my son's 13th birthday. I cannot believe he's now a teenager. He is just the cutest. And we promised to take him out to a dinner place of his choice because he's totally into food. So we're going to be doing that tonight. And I thought I am going to do my hair for this child's dinner at a restaurant because I don't know, I have dark hair. It doesn't always pick up that well here, but it is a straight up unmanageable mess in real life. It just, it, <laughs> it looks kind of dry. It looks kind of crispy. I'm going to be putting on my Rogaine. I'm going to be showing you guys uh, a little bit of heat styling as well, how I do things and what I suggest because I do get questions about this stuff. So uh, without any further, let's get into it. And I will just talk you through the steps of how I go about doing my hair. So if you have wavy hair like mine and straight hair, if you if and if you have curly hair, I would suggest definitely watching YouTube videos of women who are experts in your type of hair texture because when you brush is a little bit different. Um, you might not want to do it on dry hair as I'm going to do now, but my very first step before I shampoo or anything like that is brush my hair. People like to ask what kind of brush I use. Listen, I just keep it simple with like a tangle teaser brush. This is a tangle teaser dupe brush that I'm going to use. And you guys know this if you've been here a while, but I always brush backwards. So I brush before I shower because I just want to um, get out of the, the knots. I don't want to be contending with any sort of tangles and frankly I like to just like loosen things up and get the hair out now so that I'm not collecting it while I'm in the shower because I think we've all been through that and that is not fun. If you give yourself a good brushing before you're in the shower you will have less come out and uh, I know that we don't want all that hair getting stuck in our shower drain and we don't want to spend like double the time we normally would of just collecting it. So go ahead and give yourself a good brush. Make sure you hit the scalp as well. So I just do this if I was getting ready to shower. Now I did shower shampoo condition yesterday, so I won't be doing it today, but I do want to take you through some steps for some recommendations, I guess, as it were for shampoo and conditioner. Just what I notice what works well for me. And again, this is for my type of hair, which is 2A, 2B, and that refers to the wave pattern hair that's kind of on the drier side I is how I would describe my hair. It's definitely not oily hair. Um, if you have very oily hair, maybe the recommendation would vary a little bit for, for you, but I have watched different dermatologists talk about how to wash hair, and the advice seems to be kind of similar. Um, and my advice definitely is this, which is don't use too much shampoo. You know, wash your hair two times when you're sh in the shower, and the first one is just use a little bit, and you're not gonna probably get a big lather that first time around if you're not using very much. The second shampoo is when you're gonna get that bigger lather because the first shampoo just sort of loosens things up and it just gets into the oil and stuff like that. And you can't really have a big lather moment usually. If you are having a very big lather moment on your first shampoo and you're only using, I, I, I suspect if you have a big lather moment, you're just maybe using too much. Um, so maybe it would help to just try and cut down. The second shampoo though, you will get more lather. And again, I just don't use too much. I feel like a contributing factor to when my hair does feel dry is just definitely overusing the amount. That was happening to me with the Pure Adore shampoo. It just pumps up this huge glop when you just go down, when you push the thing down. It was just too much, so I had to learn how to just use less. That seemed to help. I didn't seem to get the dryness that a lot of people complained about, but like that's my hair, that's my scalp. We're all a little bit different, right? In terms of conditioning, I talk about this a lot. A lot of us have this um, urge to rake through a lot with the conditioner and if you do that you will often find you end up with tons of hair something about 
when the conditioner sort of emulsifies into your hair, just a lot of strands seem to come. I mean, the strands were out. You're not pulling out hair by conditioning, but it just feels like a lot more coming out. So if that is a concern for you and you don't like that, and you don't want to be driven crazy by the amount of hair that comes out at the conditioning stage, I simply suggest just to put the conditioner in the palm of your hand and use much more of a scrunching motion to push it in and you can push and hold it in there a little bit as well. I feel like we kind of sometimes rush through the conditioning moment of it all, but take that time to just like scrunch it, push it in from the bottom up. Um, that's how Curly Girl, the Curly Girl method, they advocate to do it that way. Um, often in terms of conditioner and that's what I do as well so I just push it up and in like this while I'm in the shower and just read the instructions of the conditioner often they say to leave it in for like a minute or whatever it is so definitely read it and try and do it I know we're all kind of in a rush trying to go about our mornings and whatever get on with our day um, but I feel that your hair will feel less dry if you actually use the conditioner by scrunching it in and using it by the amount of time that it often indicates on the bottle so you had your shower, you've conditioned your hair, you're letting it air dry, hopefully, and I know some of us in a rush and we use a blow dryer, cool, you have to do you. Of course, the blow dryer will be a little bit more heat, you know, especially if you're using it like every second day, you're using it a lot. I try not to, I try to air dry most of the time, but sometimes I do air dry. I, I don't feel like, I'm uh, sorry, um, blow dry, sometimes I do blow dry. I don't feel like heat tools are the end of the world, as long as you're not using them excessively, you know, I, he, I often heat style my hair to make these videos, um, but I don't make videos every single day, so I'm not using heat tools every single day. I feel like brushing actually does a lot of damage to my personal hair. I, I know that it yanks, and I feel like heat tools sort of, at least from my hair texture, get a bad, um, they get a bad rep, but I feel like the brushing actually is a contributing factor to damage as well. I brush as much as I need to. Some people brush a lot. I don't, I don't brush multiple times through the day. I just try and keep it to one a day if I can. Uh, I wanna talk now about parts. I'm gonna show you how I put on my Rogaine in a second because that's part of my routine still. I do get asked that question. I do have to keep using Rogaine to help with my, um, to help keep my spot filled. That's part of the deal that you sort of are making when you start using this product. But let's talk about parts, okay. Parting your hair is so important if you're struggling with hair loss or your hair is just not looking its best. You need to take the time, in my opinion, to figure out where your hair parts the best and looks the best. Because I'm gonna show you something about my hairline. Sometimes if I part it, and you have seen me in other videos where I part it here. Is there anything wrong with parting there? No, I mean, you do you. Right now the fashionable style is a middle part. I made a video about that too. If you guys have seen it, I sort of trace back the whole middle part with waves. I kind of uh, take a historical look into the hair history of that. So um, I guess I will link that up as well if you want to watch it if you haven't already. I had a lot of fun making that. I love delving into historical topics. My background uh, in studies is European studies, which had a lot of history in it. So I just like love looking through old pictures and trying to find the uh, provenance of certain hairstyles and stuff like that. But anyhow, enough about that. You want to hear about the part. Okay, my forehead is further back. Do you see? So my forehead is here. So no matter what I do, it's gonna look more receding if I part it this way. You know, it's gonna look thinner. And it is a bit thinner because the way my hair is, I have thin spots. Like imagine if I parted it here, right? Do you see like here and here are the thinning spots. So I'm thinning in the temples. So the closer that I part it to my temple, the further back my hairline looks and therefore the thinner my hair looks. And that's fine too, sometimes I don't care. Sometimes I just fill it in with hair fibers. And I'll show you this, this is a new one I've been trying called Alfie. I'll show you that at the end. Um, you can part there if you want, you, you do you. But I'm just saying, if I part it in the middle, my actual hairline is the most forward at that spot. So I find that if I do it here, my hair just naturally looks more full. Not only that, it, it hides these. So. That could look different for everybody. If you have thinner areas in your temples, consider a middle part. I know the middle part's a hard one, especially if you're like Generation X or even a millennial. The middle part might not be what you're feeling. You might feel it's too young, it's too plain looking. We have a lot of associations with middle parts. If you're my age, like from the 70s, and of it looking kind of dowdy and old fashioned, I suggest maybe you try it though, if you're trying to like cover up some sort of thinner areas there. So that's all I gotta say about parts. Choose your part wisely, spend a bit of time looking. Oh, I forgot to mention that when I do part my hair, hair here, on this side here, that's incidentally also where my hair's thinnest at the back, right? So consequently, not only does it look thinner here, it looks thinner like you can see through to my scalp still because Rogaine and these products that help with hair loss are a boost more than anything else. It hasn't 
resolved all of my hair issues altogether forever. It, I still have thinner spots, um, but yeah. I resolve that now just by doing the old middle part. I don't know, for as long as it's, I guess I'll just be using this middle part for as long as I can, right? <laughs> okay, so here we go. Okay, apologies that I'm really wiggly. I have to adjust, I, this shirt that I'm wearing keeps going completely up every time I lift my arms, um, so that's super annoying. Okay, Rogaine, so yes, I am still using Rogaine. The way that I choose to use it after a number of years of using it now is just to use less, uh, but to keep at it daily. Uh, you can go down to a maintenance dose, according to dermatologists, you know, use it less frequently. Speak to your dermatologist about the frequency that might be right for you. Personally, find that I, I forget. If I start to skip, I start to forget. So I'd rather just use much less on a daily basis. Um, yeah, so I just go in there like this, as I always have, and I just put little dabs where I need it, right? I don't know, so like just a small amount and then I massage it in. Spending extra time where I know it's the thinnest, which is back here. This has not changed. Like I've been, <laughs> if you've been watching my channel for a while, this is how I've always done it. This is how I continue to do it. Do I use liquid these days? The answer to that is no. Uh, since the pandemic of it all, I have not easily been able to get my hands on targets. I specifically like their Up and Up brand liquid because I did use the men's and I just found that it agreed with me and it was definitely doing what it was supposed to do. And I'm just wary of switching brands. So if I could lay my hands on that, which maybe I can because they've just opened the land borders, which means cross border shopping is now available to me. Um, I can maybe go to Buffalo, which is my nearest American city and grab some. Have not had a chance to do that yet. I mean, the land border literally just opened this week. Um, but maybe soon, maybe a visit to Target and Trader Joe's of course is in my near future. That would be kind of fun actually now that I mention it. If I do, I'll take you guys with me. How does that sound? Okay, so, so yeah, so that's all rubbed in. I will just go off camera for a second and grab myself a coffee and I'll be right back as I just let this air dry and sink into my scalp. So be back in a sec. So Rogaine's all dry on my scalp and so while I was off camera, I decided to put in some heat protectant. I shouldn't say I decided to. I normally put in some heat protectant because I wanted to give that a chance to sort of dry into my hair before I start using heat styling, which I'm gonna do in a second with you guys. I use still Kerasene. I've had this forever. So if you saw this like a year and a half ago on my channel, this is the same bottle. It still has a decent amount in it. This is Kerasene Nutritive Nectar Thermique. Uh, which is a polishing, nourishing milk blow dry care for dry hair. If you really want to get a good result from this particular product, and it is expensive, I have to warn you, but it does it does last if you're not someone who does a ton of heat styling. If you want to really get the best result, I found the way that it works best is you have to use it on each section, right? And then do your heat styling. You have to really carefully go through each section and put it on. But I kind of did a bit of a faster thing today, which is I just put some in my hair and kind of went through pretty uh, quickly like this. And it is pretty much soaked in now. There is no wet feeling from it or anything like that. I want to show you though, because I know that this is of interest, how much hair came out. And let me just get a piece of white paper so I can show it to you guys. I have a printer. This is like my home office as well. So I have a printer next to uh, the setup here. Okay, so this is the hair that I just got from my, I don't know if you can see. This is just came off, this just came off my brush now. This is less than usual. I normally have a much bigger pile than that. And I'm just telling you this because it is normal to lose hair when you brush your hair. It is normal to get a big lump. I would strongly suggest maybe you don't count it because that could send you down a path of just obsessing. But I'm just trying to normalize it. I feel like people talk about that and it is disgusting to show a hairball and a lot of people don't, but I just regularly have them. This is normal life for me, right? I didn't shower today. If I had showered and conditioned, this would be probably three times the size that you're seeing now, right? So let's just keep that in mind. Oh my God, that's gross. Not to even mention how much hair we have to pick up with the vacuum and you know, I have like, a Roomba to help as well. And it's just like, it's always hair. It's just hair inside the compartment, hair and dust. It's part of life. Losing hair is, is part of life. Okay, I had to peel off a layer because I know I'm gonna be heat styling my hair now. Things are about to get hot in here. This is my VKK hair straightening brush. And I've never had one before. Uh, this one was sent to me. I don't wanna be the YouTuber who's like, I made a video about that, go and watch it. But I mean, I did make a video reviewing this item. It is not available as far as I know right now to, um, people in the US, it is 
Canada and the UK. But I mean, this is a straightening brush. It's not hard to find one on Amazon. There are a lot of competing brands if this is something you're interested in. One thing that I liked about it is that it sort of gives a sort of more natural looking straightened look instead of the very pin straight um, straightening iron look that clamps on both sides. This just sort of, it doesn't sort of smash the hair down. It's sort of, the hair kind of flows through it. Well, you'll see, I mean, I won't belabor me doing this too much. I'll just sort of show you what it does, but you know, I don't need like a 10 out of 10 straightened look tonight. I'm going out to a restaurant <laughs> with my kid and my husband, neither of whom will even notice if I straighten my hair or not. If you know, you know, if you live that life, um, you know that the guys in your life don't usually notice your hair. So yeah, so it stopped flashing, so I'm putting it at 170 degrees Celsius, not Fahrenheit. And what I like about this is that it's just, generally speaking, less hot than my, um, I have a babyless or babyless straightener and that one tends to, it is quite hot. Like if I straighten my hair with that one, I'm like, ah, after I can't touch it, it's too hot. I'll burn my fingers. This one, it doesn't happen. It doesn't, it doesn't make my hair as hot as that. I've got to think that that's got to be a little better for my hair. Don't know. Anyhow, what you do with this just very simply is you pass the hair through. Um, and I of course forgot to section my hair. Let me just show you one pass and then maybe I'll just do the rest off camera. I don't think that's that interesting watching me use this, but generally speaking, okay, generally speaking, you just grab a section and, uh, you just kind of go through it, right? Slowly. I have no mirror, so this was not that well thought out uh, on my part. And you just kind of go through, right? And so you have this side, right? And that took just seconds versus. So you have this side that had one pass versus this side, which has had no passes. So let me just finish this up um, off screen and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so that took me maybe all of five minutes. That is, this tool is actually really quick to run through my particular hair. And part of the reason for that that you guys might not know is that I don't have very thick hair. I look like I have a lot of hair because it's wavy and it's kind of frizzy and it has volume upwards, you know what I mean? But when you actually sort of do take the time to straighten it, it there's not that much. It just kind of looks, and also my hair's dark, that helps too. Uh, it's a texture thing. My hair just has a texture that makes it look like more than it actually is. So for those of you comparing, don't compare. We all have different hair types, right? Okay, so that gave me the sort of straightened vibe that I wanted without it being pin straight and without using too, too much heat. It just looks more managed now and less frizzy, but it still has some bend to it, which I like. I do like this, this uh, particular hair straightener rather than a um, iron just easier to use. Okay, so let's just say I wanted to pin up the sides of my hair and I wanted to, and I'm just showing you this because I still do use hair fibers from time to time. I don't need it necessarily if my part is here, but let's just say I wanted to wear my hair up here, okay? Here. Let's just say I wanted to do this kind of a hairstyle and I'm gonna do it on this side too. What would I do? And I'm doing this because I do wanna show you this new product that I have called Alfie. This was sent to me for free. I'm not getting any kickback or anything like that to show it to you guys, but they sent it to me actually first in dark brown. And then the dark brown, just as a warning to you as well, if you have hair the same color as mine, the dark brown is not similar to other dark browns and other products that are called dark brown. You know what I'm saying? It's a lighter color. It has almost more of chestnut or redness in it. It's just way too light for my hair, so it didn't do a very good job. Um, whereas I can get away with dark brown in all almost like your L'Oreal's of the world, the L'Oreal Root Spray, for instance, for me, which is a different product, but dark brown is actually this color. So they went ahead and resent it to me in black, which was very nice of them. So I have used it once, and they actually send on this uh, little tool too, which is just sort of to fake the hairline. And what you do in this case, if you wanna cover this up, because you know, let's say that looks ugly to you and you don't like it. I'm telling you it's totally normal, but whatever. Let's say you want it to have more depth, you're taking photos. I don't know, you're gonna be in the sun, and you know that your hair is a bit see-through, go ahead and just use some hair fibers. They are not plasticky, they don't have any scent, they are made out of keratin, chopped up keratin. That's my understanding of what hair fibers are made of and this one is as well. Um, yeah, so you just sprinkle. You can use a salt and pepper shaker, you can use this as well. So I'm just gonna show you. So there's the dark inside versus the not dark inside. Can you see the difference? I don't know how well it's picking up. 
right? You can see already that this made my hairline come down. So if that's an issue, you really like fibers. This one is very nice. The actual kit comes with, um, and again, not getting paid to say this, but it comes with a protectant, a sort of a lock spray. This lock spray works really well. If you spray this in, I did this and I went to the gym and it didn't, it didn't budge. I rubbed my fingers on it and I couldn't even get anything off after the gym, which is pretty impressive. I don't like the scent of it. I find it too strongly scented, so I don't use it. If I wanted to lock this in, and I d really don't care tonight, um, I'm washing my hair tomorrow morning. Um, I don't care, so I won't be using this at all. And it will still stay put. It will still be there, right? So yeah, yeah, look at the difference. I mean, look where my hairline is here. And then if you look here, how much further back it is, right? So it's like here. <laughs> Right, and again, this is why I would not part my hair around here because look, it, it will look like it's, my hairline will look like it's back here. But if I go here where I even have some baby hairs or even here, that would probably be the ideal spot because if you look, right, that's, that's where my hairline dips the most. Just try doing that. Look in the mirror yourself, have a look and see if you can identify where your hairline is, uh, I guess, lowest. Is that what we say? High, yeah, high forehead would be that way, low forehead would be that way. Low your forehead is lowest if that's something that you care about. And part it there. I have parted it there before and actually looks pretty good. Let's actually try that. Let's take this down and I'll show you guys. Um, yeah, let's try this. Kind of a different look, right? <laughs> Slightly, right? So here we are. Okay, so this is not because I, you know, use the heat tool to put my parrot in a different way, of course this looks like very flat and lifeless, or maybe you like it, I don't know. But if you have like balding, see-through-y spots, which I do here, then ha -ha, hello, this stuff's your friend. You just want to cover your face with it and just pop it on. Right, and pat. Pat that down. And that's pretty much it. You'll see it's it's much darker and richer looking now. And sometimes I like that. I just like that rich look around my roots. Hair fibers are nothing to be embarrassed about. Honestly, if you find that they help you, definitely use them. It is such an inexpensive, amazing invention. I am just, yeah. I, I've liked pretty much all the hair fibers that I've tried so far. So I'm just a big fan in general. Um, and these ones are nice too. So thank you to people at Alfie for sending them to me. They're a company who's actually really nice to me, unlike some other companies. <laughs> when you're a smaller creator, honestly, you just people just want to use you. That That's the truth. They just want to um, use and abuse you. They will be as rude as rude can be. They will do the absolute least and they want the absolute world. So they'll be demanding you make this, that, and the other for some product that is like $20. Um, Alfie, people have been just so nice and like non-pressuring or anything like that. Um, I even just spoke really realistically about what I thought about the scent of the spray, which I am saying honestly here that I don't like and they didn't care. They still just sent me the black to try as well and they said, thank you for your honest reviews. So I really appreciate that. So I'm happy to try and support people that are trying to do good uh, by offering products that help women that are not scammy. There's nothing scammy about hair fibers, right? So I'm happy to say that I really like them. Again, not sponsored. But if you're listening, Alfie, you can sponsor me in the future if you would like to do that, all right? All right, everybody, so that's pretty much my routine. I feel like maybe I haven't covered anything off here that you might like to know about. I cannot promise that I'm gonna see all the comments. The way I look at it is that I look at my comments for about um, a few days, at least until usually my next video is out. I'll look at the comments until then. So you kind of have to catch me quick, definitely within the first 24 hours or try and respond really quickly. After that, your best bet is getting me on Instagram if you have any sort of personal questions you want to ask about the Rogan, anything else that you've seen here. Uh, catch me on Instagram, DM me there. I'm much more responsive to personal comments. The reason I don't, if you maybe don't know this about me, is that I make a video, I put it out. After about a week, sometimes even a few days, those first few days of people watching, they really are there because they know you, they like your content, they're maybe excited to get something that you just made you know, for your audience. And then after that, it starts to maybe trickle, trickle out to the wider set of YouTube viewers out there. And many of them are very mean. I will be very honest, very mean, very abusive. And I just, I would rather spend my time instead of dealing with the negative energy of that because it does weigh on you. It's not like, you know, water off a duck's back. I 
can ignore it to a certain degree, but I think why even bother with that bad energy? If someone really wants to find me, they I give lots of different ways to find me. They will find me if they really want to, but if they're just there to pop off some mean comments about me, like, no thank you. So I just sort of look at comments when they're kind of new and then I um, just focus on making the next video. So uh, not to discourage you from making comments, even if this is in the future, other people do see them, just don't always respond personally to them, um, just as a way of protecting my own energy. I'm sure you guys understand that. And if you don't, well, when you get to my age, <laughs> you probably will, and you you sort of are publicly putting yourself and your hair out there. You know, I love doing what I, I do, and I, I have gone through periods where I've just been sad because people have been so negative. So, um, so yeah, by doing that, I sort of limit, you know, myself to, it's not just that I just only want to hear good news from people, it's not that. Um, but I just like to keep my mind in a creative space where I'm happy making content for you guys and I just find, you know, through trial and error, that's worked best for me. Okay, I'm gonna wrap it up there. This was kind of a longer one than I intended. I hope I answered your questions and sort of took you through what's going on with me and my hair right now, why I'm wearing a hair part where it is, um, how I deal with dry hair, which is just using less shampoo and scrunching in my conditioner. I think I went through it all uh, and uh, talked about hair fibers, heat styling tools. Yeah, I think that that is what you need to know about what's going on with me. Maybe the next time you see me, I'll have a haircut. I know I keep threatening this haircut. I haven't done it yet. Actually, I'm trying out a new product where I have to keep my hair the same length just for continuity purposes. Uh, <laughs> we'll talk about that more maybe in an upcoming video. But until then, we will see you soon. Thanks so much for watching.